Okay, uh, welcome to this uh, short introductory video on the Synthesist Waldorf Pulse Editor. Um, as you can see at the moment, this is the basic voice layout that we've got in front of us here. Um, we can select different voice memories just by clicking on the section up here and it will load different ones. We have a MIDI keyboard where we can preview the different uh, sounds without having to hook up an external keyboard ourselves. Um, we have a help button here which will give you a basic overview of what you should be doing and one of the first things you do is click your MIDI setup and set your MIDI input and output ports and channels like so. I've already, already, I've already done that so I'll just click OK. Um, so we have all the various sections here as well as the main help here if you click on to the name of any particular section like that you will get specific help on the particular parameters that are in that section so there we go just to give you a quick example of that which is quite useful and stops you having to reach for the manual every five seconds um, okay we can initialize the sound here this will give you a quick warning to say you're about to initialize the voice buffers and the current par patch parameters let's just do that for a moment we get a basic sawtooth and oscillator one we can switch to a pulse and you'll get a graphical representation of what wave formula you've got there and, and if you change the pulse width you'll go from a square wave sounding to a much shorter pulse like that here we go and then we can bring in some oscillator two and that's uh, put that one as a pulse as well let's thin them down a little bit uh, we'll just again we'll just offset the fine tune as well make it a bit thicker sounding that's pretty loud and proud isn't it okay we'll, uh, we'll leave oscillator three for the moment we've got the envelope one here again if you want to redraw the envelope the adsr envelope it will get drawn from you for you so that gives you a good visual representation of what what is going on with your particular patch sounds let's just do that there we go let's just take the volume down a little bit we can uh, change the filter cutoff here again you've got nice visual representation of what's going on with the filter let's uh, we'll add in a little bit of envelope one modulation i think we'll make it go positive and if we make that quite sharp uh, we'll get a quite nice there we go bring in a bit more mod I think there we go got something going there um, you've got LFO1 and LFO2 down here you can if you change the speed you get basically a little representation of what's going on there again with LFO2 you can change you change the shape you'll get a a nice view of what you're doing exactly if you go to one of the MIDI syncable ones you lose the speed control you'll just get basically a clock division that'll give you an idea of what your LFO1 will be doing the LFO2 is not clock syncable but it does have an onset delay again you get a nice visible representation there of what's going on got your arpeggiator section here got your basic performance things like pitch bends and pitch mod sources and portamento down here You've got your mod matrix over here You've got four mod slots uh, it's basic you just pick your source here pick your destination change it to negative amount or positive amount whatever you want to do they got four there I got the extra one there for the pulse plus which is the cv2 one and it's basically that's where we are with the sort of voice editing if we go into the system you've got your basic system set up uh, here got some extra ones for the plus here for the cv um, calibration uh, we'll go onto the librarian um, we've got a file browser over here so let's just let's just pull up some things I've got in here already so you might have some patches already loaded on the disk so if you just um, if we just double click on one of them here there you'll get a message saying it's been loaded in you can preview it here let's have a double click this one see what this one is there we go We'll have a look at this one 
Okay, yeah, so we can just basically, you can switch to voice memory now and you can just tweak them in there if you want. Um, back to the librarian, so save patch to disk is fairly obvious. That'll save whatever is in the voice edit buffer as it were at the moment. You can save that as an individual uh, patch to disk. Save patch to pulse, if we do that it'll ask you, you know, which particular user memory on the pulse you want to put it into. And save patch to librarian. This um, this area here, 1 to 40, is just like a separate user memory from the hardware that just sits in the librarian. It's useful because you can load um, banks from disk straight into here and you can load the memories that are in your hardware straight into here. So send pulse memories to librarian. If we do that, it'll drag all 40 memories out of the hardware and it sticks them into um, this area here. And then you can do various things like you might want to change the order of things. So you can again, you can save patch. If you save patch to librarian now, you could put that number one into a different slot or whatever you wanted to do with it. Um, or you could just, if you load them from the pulse, you can then just save librarian's memories to disk. So you can just back up what's in there. What what was on your hardware was now in there. Now you can back it up to disk as well too. You can retrieve it later. That way you can sort of build up when you're in banks and. Um, multiple banks that you can have on, on on disk and just pull in when whenever you want feel like it um and the last one there is save memories to pulse yeah so uh, again you'll get a you've got a warning there that you're about to write over the memories inside the hardware so if you don't want to write all these 40 memories that you've got in here into the hardware just click cancel and the last option you've got in here is to save the cv gate parameters to disk so if you've got a pulse plus version that you've got the various um cv calibration uh, adjustments in here if you use your pulse to um, control various bits of equipment you might want to save to disk various different cv calibrations and that's an easy way and again if you just click if you save one into here uh, if you double click it from the file browser it will load those calibration settings into the system for you so you're ready to go with them on whatever particular piece of kit that you've um, you've connected it up to Okay, and that's where we are. And this is the standalone version. So well, now we'll just um, move on to the uh, the door plug-in version and uh, show you what you can do with that. Right, here we are inside the door. In this case, it's a cake walk by BandLab. Uh, first thing we need to do is to free up some MIDI input and output ports because the editor works much better if you do that. So inside my door here, I'm just going to deselect the one input and one output port that I want to use for the editor like that okay okay now we can insert insert the um, editor into the door in this case it's a VST2 like so but there are VST3 and AU versions available so it will be fully tested inside Mac and, and should work fine in most doors let's just load it off screen there and bring it down there we go uh, yeah, everything. Oh, I've got to set the MIDI ports first, haven't I? Of course, just to set that one. Click on the MIDI, configure MIDI ports, and just pick the ones that I just freed up in the door. DIN one there. Yeah, that one there. Okay, right now we should be working fine for selecting different patches. There we go. Everything working fine. Okay. So, what I'm just going to do now is this should work as well. Yep, that's working fine. Okay, I've got a MIDI uh, bass track here. What I'm going to do is just a, I'm going to divert, point its output at the order pulse editor. So the MIDI notes from that track will play through the editor basically. So if we set that going. And we can just play around with that as it goes along. Volume down a bit, a little bit, I think. That's a bit better. Okay, you can hear me now, I think, over the top of it. But of course, the main advantage of being in the door environment is the fact that we want to automate things. So if we go down here, if we click on, on automation lanes, if we pick the water off pulse editor here and choose parameter, we've got various things we can. Well, let's do the traditional thing and then we'll automate the VCF cutoff, shall we? We'll just go like that, okay. Let's drag that over here so you can see. I've got my automation line here, so if we just if we just draw in some 
draw in some automation on the VCF cutoff. Like that, and then when we start playing back again, we can see all that working. And there we go, we can automate so uh, quite a lot of basically all the voice parameters you can automate. And there we go, that's how it works in the door environment. Okay, thanks very much for watching.